Don't you just hate it when you have a 4K ultra-wide 40-inch monitor and your laptop screen is not 4K ultra-wide? Well, no worries. Because you can buy lots and lots and lots of screen. So much screen that doesn't fit on my camera. This here is a KYY. It's the brand there. Dual screen extender for a laptop. It's big. X90D Black Edition. I reviewed a similar product from KYY. It was good. I liked it. So when they said, do you want to review another? I said, yes, I do. 15.6 inches times two. IPS times two. 1080p times two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Monitors, Z for plural with a Z. USB-C to USB-A. Charges the thing, powered it. I don't think I'm gonna need it, but we'll find out. I believe this laptop will have enough power delivery to power the monitors. Uh, USB-C to C, plus a little A adapter. Very good. Drivers, which I might need. We'll see, Ooh, this is a metal. This is nice. It's a nice USB key. So, so you can see that here. I'm just gonna get my laptop out of here because mine's big. This is also big. So we have a foot that comes out. Nice hinge on it, actually. It's a firm hinge which is good, but it's not an overly firm hinge. If this was a loose hinge, you would really not be happy with it because it would slide around. It's a, almost a perfectly structured hinge. A little bit of rubber uh, padding there, which is interesting. Angleage, so you get more. I feel like that didn't have that before. It might be an upgrade. Uh, so now you have even more, so that when you get it back on an angle, you get grip here and you get grip here, also known as gription. So you can see there, it's not gonna latch onto your laptop and crush it. I have tested dual monitor extenders, laptop monitor extenders where they do latch onto your screen, like they actually go onto both sides, which was fine, but it did make me nervous. I will be honest, it did make me nervous because that's a lot of heavy weight on the hinge of your actual laptop. You can see here, it's not quite fit up. This is a 16 inch. This is probably set more for a 15 ish inch. So what you actually do is you turn these. So that increased the room, this one, it's flat that way. This one is at a 90 degree hinge, and we're good. Actually set up, we'll just jump right in here. We're gonna hook up this here. Not sure if it's gonna work or if it's just gonna supply power here, we'll have to see. It's doing driver stuff. Okay, there, done, okay. So this, there are drivers on here, let's kill that. There are drivers on this here. So if you can't get the drivers automatically, like that it found the drivers automatically okay so let's see if we can record this on camera if it's even physically possible to get so much screen on camera here it's gonna be difficult for me so we can see here we're duplicating which will be nice for this initial part where i just look at the actual screens exactly so we're gonna go like this so we can get a bit of angle on it uh, this is obviously an ips screen this here is basically the king of screens it's 120 hertz high color space, mini LED screen. This is one of the nicest screens you're gonna find on a laptop. It means it has absolute blacks. It's gonna be very bright. Uh, I could bring in a laptop, but I wanna put this against the hardest, right? Just absolutely give it the hardest task possible. So, you know, we can see that the same image mirrored on both. Blacks are actually pretty darn good on this for an IPS, but obviously the mini LED is better. It's a mini LED. However, this is not a glossy screen, so you can't see me reflected in there, but you can certainly see me reflected over here. Look at that, there's me, and then over here, you might be able to maybe see me a little bit. No, I don't think you can. So non-glossy and glossy. Depending on your scenario, you might prefer one or the other. For these type of screens, you probably want non-glossy because they may not be at perfect angle. So 1080p, very good. Refresh is gonna be only 60 hertz, which is fine. They are side monitors, and you're probably not gaming on them, and you could, but I think they're better as side monitors that you're not gaming on. So that's that. Uh, the blacks are actually pretty darn good, honestly, between the two of them. This is a mini LED. This is an IPS, right? It's actually pretty good on both. I do have some light shining down on them. And you can see the difference in reflectivity. You can see my hand there, right? Significantly less reflective on the left screen there. So I'll bring that back slightly. It's gonna be very hard to film this, by the way, without pulling one of them out. So you can see here, the reds are more natural here, a little bit desaturated, because it's not gonna be 100% DCI-P3. 
The blacks are very good. Again, we're comparing one of the best screens that you can buy on a laptop right now to a portable monitor, so it's a very unfair comparison. Blues look the same, more or less. This is a little brighter, but... It's primarily in the reds, honestly. The greens look actually the same. Literally the same. Okay, we'll go like this here. Another very demanding video here. This one should look pretty darn good. Yeah, obviously more vibrant. Like I said, 1080, uh, 1080p, higher resolution there. The crispness is pretty much fine on both of them for these videos. However, uh, this is a mini LED screen. All right. Okay, so we'll kill that off just to do comparison. You know, if you're going with some crazy screen like that. But now what we're gonna do is we'll just show it on this one only exclusively and I'll just get an idea of how this one looks. It's certainly bright enough. I mean, this is like a 1,000 nit screen, so it's crazy. But this is surprisingly bright for a portable monitor. A lot of portable monitors are not that bright. This all looks good here. Honestly, it looks fine. The only place that I think it's going to suffer is in pure reds. That's the only place, which is normal. That's how these you know non-color, high-color space videos look. And I mean, if you're using this with a productivity machine or anything that doesn't have like a god-tier screen, you're probably not going to notice the difference here. Uh, now this is a little sharper as 16 inches because it's a high resolution. This is 1080p. If I, it was a primary screen, usually I prefer 1600p or 1800p for 15, 16 inches. But as a secondary monitor, 1080p is totally fine. Like absolutely, totally fine. I don't notice like jankies or anything around there. It doesn't bother me at all. I think it looks just fine. I'll bring in some text here. Just go into the little thing here. All right, so over here, you know, we have text. And then we come over here. Yeah, it looks totally fine. Obviously it's slightly larger, so you're gonna have to play with scaling a little bit. You know, you'll have to come over here and uh, depending on your resolution of your screen. If this one I have it scaled down, which I do, because I like a little bit more room, things look bigger over here. So you just come in and you go from 150 down to 125, for example. All right, much better. Okay, so now what I think we're gonna do is just set up some workflow, some mock workflows here. So let's say working on an essay, student, professional, whatever. So you come over here, come over here. You notice we have different scaling over here, so potentially I have larger scaling over there than over here because I'm trying to read something smaller text. This one has slightly larger scaling, slightly finer scaling. All right, so it's finer, coarser. You can do both. So we'll go like that there. Over here, you know, maybe I'm looking at bringing an essay on some Lenovo laptops here for whatever reason so over here I'm watching a stream right streaming on the right watching a stream on the right that's got some data over here and then I'm writing essay over here and then over here maybe rather than doing that I have some type of data so I have a data entry spreadsheet over here by the way this thing would have been amazing when I was in my undergrad or masters to be honest it would have been just glorious or when I was teaching it would have been so good because I can have my data in an Excel spreadsheet over here, for example. Bring it down so you actually read it, right? And then over here, maybe I have a document that I'm reading, like a PDF document that has some information or a website that I'm searching and doing some research. Maybe I'm just using Wikipedia, right? Whatever research you use, right, Wikipedia. Here's a video that I'm working on. I actually already finished it. So I have my video over here, video files over here that I'm working on. Potentially then over here, I have my actual you know, editing thing. I can also undock this if I wanted. I could put my timeline over here. All right, so I have the video over here that I'm watching to make sure it works. My video files over here and my actual edit over there. Awesome. Lots of different things you can do here. Uh, let's say you're playing games. If you're a gamer and a streamer, right, get OBS over here. This is where I can see my actual screen capture, for example. Have that running over here and this screen. Then on the left over here, maybe I have my YouTube open or my Twitch. Right? I stream over YouTube, not over Twitch, when I do. But you could have Twitch over here with your chat. You could have YouTube over here with your chat. And then you could have your game in the middle. So imagine that game in the middle, OBS over here, 
YouTube, Twitch if you're streaming on both. Holy smokes, would that be amazing if you're streaming off a laptop, if you're a gamer laptop or whatever streamer. That would be pretty sick, to be honest. So that's kind of a no-brainer there. So in the previous video I did for these guys, I talked about this as well. Notice my footprint. My footprint is here. Nothing under here. So imagine you have a small desk. You're in a library or a coffee shop with a small desk. You can't set up a monitor that's not attached. Just a monitor on the side there because it's going to fall off the desk. So you have to shift your whole laptop over, kind of fiddle it on there. There's no way you can get three. Here, look at how small my footprint is. Right, my footprint physically touching the desk is just how big my laptop is. This is empty space over there. This is empty space over here, which means that I don't take up a lot of room. If I'm in a classroom and if I'm in a coffee shop, whatever the situation is, you take up significantly less room in this way here. It's kind of awesome, just the fact that you can do that. You can also play with it in terms of orientation, right? Something like that there, you get a vertical screen, just change your orientation windows. Now you have a full text document that you're reading there, plus this over here. It's a pretty sweet, to be honest. So that's pretty much, I think, all we need to do with this here, the KYY. KYY brand uh, seems to be pretty good. I've reviewed a couple of other products and on places like Amazon, they seem to be very well reviewed, like, put some of their stuff on there and I've read them and as a brand they seem to be very well reviewed. That's the KYY though. This thing is pretty sick to be honest, just like the last one. It's a really, really good product. Not going to be for absolutely everybody. It's for people who need to have a three screen setup and if you do, it works exactly as advertised and it's good.